Hello, everyone. Welcome to our new Analyst Angle. And I'm Christoph Bertrand with the Cube Research. And today we're talking to Tim Zonka, who is from Convault. And we'll be talking about the recent outage uh, that uh, hit a lot of companies around the world. Tim, welcome. Tell us uh, about you. Uh, Christoph, it's great, great to see you. Thanks for having me on the show. And uh, I run our portfolio, uh, uh, portfolio marketing function here at Commvault. And that really uh, gives me a good chance to work with our customers, closely with our product teams, as we take our uh, innovation out to the market around the world. Well, thank you so much for uh, your uh, introduction here. And clearly, you know a lot about customers. You spend a lot of time with them in the field um, and uh, video conferences. And I'm sure you were very busy last week or the past few days with what happened. So uh, what I'd like to do is ask you, really, what did you observe? Um, what were... Uh, you know, the uh, type of impacts that uh, your customers reported and what did you do about it as a company uh, and individually, what was your experience? I think the biggest thing that I heard, it, frankly, it goes beyond our customer base. I mean, customers as well as, uh, you know, prospects I was, I was talking to as, as well as other folks out in the market is just how interconnected the, uh, the, this event made us all realize we are. And so when I, you know, it doesn't matter if I was talking to a customer, a prospect, frankly, even a couple family members, um, the impact of of the this outage was was far reaching. And I think it really points to what it means when there's a significant outage for the technology that uh, people around the world rely on. So I think it was that interconnectivity was one of the biggest conversations and common threads across uh, everyone I talked to over the course of the last week. Yeah, I mean, you you mentioned uh, you know uh, family members knowing about this in in a sense, this outage humanized a lot of the uh, yeah. uh, IT behind the scenes stuff that happens. And actually, I have a couple of interesting uh, research slides here from uh, our partner ETR, and uh, they actually went out and did a quick survey right after the uh, uh, first couple of days uh, of the outage. And what we could see is that uh, ninety six percent of organizations they talked to were affected. Now that doesn't come as a big shock, except that it's 96%. We lived through it, so we know it was big, uh, but this is a very significant number. Um, and by the way, to be clear, this outage was definitely not nefarious. This was not ransomware. This was uh, essentially uh, uh, essentially a, a logical uh, sort of disaster with a problem with an update uh, of one of the components in CrowdStrike, content update mm -hmm. actually. So this being said, uh, let's talk about the magnitude of uh, the impact. And as you can see from this chart, it's significant, if not very significant. Almost half had a very significant or extremely significant uh, impact to their infrastructure, to their business, to their operations. So uh, yes, this interconnectivity, this domino effect has played out, uh, has been definitely felt uh, throughout. So what I'd like to do now is maybe, you know, as, as, as we started talking about uh, uh, you know, what you saw with your customers is maybe take a little bit of a step back and ask you, uh, what are the, the the main learnings or the, the sort of the lessons that uh, as you think about this uh, event that you individually and as a company uh, have uh, for our viewers? Yeah, I think the the main thing you touched on this a little bit already, Christoph, which is one of the main things is because this was not a, a malicious or, or nefarious uh, uh, outage um, or, you know, attack that caused the outage is uh, and your data on the last slide, I think, points at this, just how widespread it was, first of all. But the connection point that it wasn't nefarious, I think another widespread point of data uh, that um, you don't have to look far to see from you know multiple uh, research sources is also how widespread attacks have become. And so I think with this, um, thank goodness, it wasn't a malicious attack because the result is because it's not, you can trust the data, you could trust the process, you could trust the kind of these, the, the fixes when you quickly isolate a problem. If there's an attack, all of a sudden, you can't trust what could otherwise be a, a straightforward set of fixes. And so the process changes. You still may be you know, doing some sort of recovery, but the mechanics look different. And so I think one of the things that, you know, one of the lessons learned kind of back to your question is, that um, nefarious or not, uh, but especially if something were, it was a bit of a warning shot. And so I think the the lesson learned is how prepared are you for something like this? You know, and and especially 
you know, what if this, you can ask the what if scenario, what if this was a malicious uh, attempt uh, or attack rather, would you have been prepared to go through those additional mechanics in order to restore, you know, the portions of your business when you couldn't trust what would otherwise be a straightforward fix? And so I, I would say that that's the, the biggest lesson learned was, are you prepared? Are you prepared for an outage? And especially are you prepared with, you know, thank goodness in this case it wasn't, but when there's malicious intent and action behind uh, what, you know, what causes a, a, an outage. I think you bring up a very, very good point because uh, this was in a sense a, and, and I'm going to use the word with caution here, a traditional uh, logical disaster, essentially an update went wrong. Well, normally that only happens uh, at, um, on a very limited scale. It's within your own data center, your own environment, IT infrastructure, somebody makes a mistake, something goes wrong. Okay. You fix it. And that's where backup and recovery solutions such as yours can help because you can roll back and uh, and, and get back on your feet. What's interesting here is the fact that this really spread quickly, had a domino effect around the world globally, uh, touched a number of endpoints and created a situation where a physical intervention may have been needed in some cases to get things back on track. So it didn't help. So the workflow was actually very much a traditional workflow. Right. So that's what we've sort of uh, grown up to be accustomed to until a few years ago. And I want to point this out to our viewers because what you bring up is very key. And I think that's why some of your recent innovations have gotten my attention, where you need to be able to not only test, but also deal with different workflows, because you don't know with ransomware what could have hit you, how it really hit you, what you need to do. You need to go test for multiple uh, resolution type of, of possibilities uh, and solutions. So therefore, uh, I think you bring up a very good point about the workflow being different and this being a great warning shot. So. Uh, look, what should people do to get ready now? Moving forward, um, this happened. There will be more, whether uh, mistakes or or uh, intentional. What should people do? What should uh, end users do uh, to uh, really prepare for the next big one? Yeah, you, I, I think you said uh, a word that I want to tease out because it's the response here is test. It's in, and I think. Um, the key to a resilient business, a continuous business, is preparedness. Are you constantly preparing and ensuring that you're ready for some sort of uh, incident? And are you, as you do that, are you learning about your next wave of risks? And are you improving your your preparedness and your readiness? So I think it all comes down to really um, deliberate and intense testing uh, and preparedness. Now, I think you mentioned something too that we've been discussing, which the mechanics in a cyber incident are different for testing. And so I think um, what I've seen is the, the a big discrepancy in organizations, maybe gap rather than discrepancy is, organizations have gotten really good. In many cases, I talked to a lot of customers, they've gotten great at testing for outages that are not malicious. You know, regardless if you, if you call it operational recovery or disaster recovery, whatever they call their DR in, in business continuity plans, many organizations have gotten great at it. And they 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 test frequently, they know how to re recover in, in, in those sorts of scenarios. Um, but I've talked to a handful of customers that say, hey, as great as we've gotten at that, we don't know the last time we actually recovered from a backup. And that's exactly what we would have to do in a cyber incident. And so testing those sorts of recovery processes are much more nascent. And so um, the most progressive organizations that we see doing this well, they understand that difference and they have either extended their DR in, in business continuity plans to appreciate that, that recovery looks different. There's different processes that uh, you need to understand what's the, the latest point where we trust the data and we, we would go back to it. It might be 10 days, it might be 100 days, it, it could be, you know, a long time, uh, you know, back depending on on the data. And do you have the, the, uh, um, the capabilities in place to do the forensics and, and hunt for those threats in a way that you're confident that you're restoring the right data? And, and can you run your critical applications through that recovery process testing so that you iron out all of the issues that you will run into when you do it, when the stakes are low, you're doing it on your time you're doing it you know with with your prioritization and not when chaos uh, abounds so testing i think you i think you you kind of tease it out already is preparedness and testing uh, and specifically for a cyber related incident 
uh, uh, because I think that's where we see people that, you know, where they really need to make the most progress and, and bring that level of testing up to the same level of maturity that organizations have achieved over the years as it relates to other kinds of recovery, like a disaster scenario, or, or I mean like a natural disaster or something like that, where you can trust the data. Yeah, so th these are all very good points. I think it just, you know, brings up the fact that, first of all, things have changed. Now we're in an era where, well, we were lucky on this one, okay? It could have easily uh, been something else, but um, we're in the era of cyber resilience, of cyber recovery. If you can do cyber recovery, be ready for pretty much anything that's right. in front of you, uh, then, then you can probably be in good shape for a more traditional type of recovery. I think that's uh, definitely a very good point. It's it's a different workflow, uh, and and you're right. Testing, uh, preparedness, all of these are very important best practices. So that's what I'd like to uh, leave our viewers with. Uh, you know, don't think it's uh, it's uh, one and done. It's going to happen again. It's uh, about testing. It's about testing your recovery, your recoverability, uh, and making this part of the business. And maybe you need to think about whether you have the right processes and whether the right people are actually talking together uh, from the security side and the traditional infrastructure IT upside. So with this, I'd like to thank you very much, Tim, and I'd like to thank our viewers, and we'll see you uh, on the next Analyst Angle. Thank you. Thanks.